Last time, um, we talked about um, what did Mendel do, and with your textbook, uh, chose uh, this purple flower and white flower, and <coughs> they chose the purple flower and white flower. And um, so, if you cross a purple flower with white flower, if you cross a purple flower with white flower, and, and knowing that uh, purple flower is dominant, right? That's what the term dominancy comes from. It's white. Uh, the purple flower is dominant. What kind of flower you are going to get? Knowing the quiz question today. Knowing that crossing purple with white, and purple is dominant. What are the offsprings, if you would? What are the offsprings of the babies of these two? Anybody? Purple, right? That's what Mendel did. You crossed, he crossed these two plants and he made sure this is a purebred. You all know what I mean by purebred. You've heard of that term before. And this one is purebred. It means if you cross these plants together, you always get white. You cross these plants together, you always get purple. That's what purebred means. Then he crossed them together, the white and purple, and he got purple. And he repeated again, he got purple. He repeated again, he got purple. He said, okay, I'm tired of this. I'm making it up a little bit. He said, I'm tired of this. Let's give homeworks. Nobody studies. Let's give homeworks. That's right. That's, I got tired of this. You guys not studying. So I said, Stephen, let's have homeworks. Okay. So he got tired of this. He said, okay, let's cross these together. These that they came from parents of purple and white. Let's cross them together, see what happens. Remember, before Mendel, nobody have done these things. If they have done it, they never published it. Am I making some sense? If they've done this, somebody, somebody before Mendel have, might have done it. A thousand years before Mendel, somebody might have done this, but they didn't publish it. They didn't write it anymore, or uh, a scientific paper. So when he crossed these together, then voila, he got three purple. For every three purple flower, he got one white. And then phenotypic ratio, phenotypic physical appearance. Phenotypic, it means physical appearance. Phenotypic ratio was three to one. Right? I want to make some sense. Today you're going to count kernels of corn. And then I want you to come up with the ratio. You look at this corn and of course you have to see you and your lab partner and I will tell you how to do this. You start counting the kernels and then you say Amir the ratio, the phenotypic ratio for this one is 3 to 1 or, or 1 to 1, whatever it is. And you will see different combinations. It's not always 3 to 1. 3 to 1 is the first one we talked about. But there are going to be more. Okay, Stephen, I'm going to make it some sense. When I say Stephen, I mean everybody. Okay. So, let's move on. And then I gave you these uh, homozygous. It means this is, this is homozygous. Capital P, capital P. This is homozygous. Small p, small p. And last time, the example I used was capital A because it's easier to distinguish capital A, capital A, that is homozygous. Is that right? Small a, small a, that's homozygous. Okay, that's what the term homozygous means. It means both alleles are alike. Both alleles are similar. Okay, and then heterozygous, it means the alleles are different. Capital A, small a, that's heterozygous. Hetero means different. Okay, this is different than this. Okay? I wish your textbook would not use capital P. You would use a different character. Okay? Uh, capital P because in English language capital P and capital B and capital B, P and capital P, they look alike. I wish you would have used capital A or capital B so you could see that better. But anyhow. And then <coughs> And then uh, phenotype and physical appearance, genotype, 
is arbitrary. Your textbook genotype is arbitrary. Your textbook used capital P, capital B. I'm using capital A, capital A. During exam, you can use anything you want, unless I tell you. During exam or quiz, I say it's capital B, capital B, or capital B, small b. Then you have to use B as a boy. You don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. Then if I don't give you anything, you use any letter you want. Right? So genotype is arbitrary. I mean, the genetic makeup, of course. You're talking about genetic makeup. But using the letters is arbitrary. Anything you want to use. I hope I'm, I didn't confuse you saying genotype is arbitrary. No, genotype means genetic makeup. I have genotypes. My genotypes are different than Stephen's genotype. Right? My genotypes are different than Trung's genotype. They're different, okay? But when I want to show it on a piece of paper or a whiteboard, ah, any letter I want to use. Capital A, small a, capital B, small. Okay, let's go. And here they are, uh, genotype is yes, capital P, capital P, homozygous, already mentioned that. Heterozygous is capital A, small a, capital P, small p, and heterozygous, capital P, small b. Those are the three flowers that Mendel was talking about, right? Those are the flowers, and here they are. And then, of course, white is uh, the recessive one, or white uh, all of the time. All the time, again, <laughs> in biology, it's very scary to say all the time, but a recessive is uh, homozygous. The recessive ones is homozygous recessive, they call it. Okay, the test crops. Let's move to something else. Let's move to another uh, ratio, phenotypic ratio. The phenotypic ratio for the last example I used was 3 to 1, right? The phenotypic ratio for test cross is different. And what is a test cross? To determine the genotype, we can carry out a test cross breeding the mystery individual with a homozygous recessive individual. Okay, what does it mean? What does that sentence say? If, uh, for example, if I give you a, a horse, right? Everybody knows, everybody. Uh, or a bird, uh, horses takes a long time to breed. But if I give you a bird, and it's a brown bird, right? Brown, I'm gonna use brown. A brown bird. And a brown bird, you don't know, you bring it to me and say, Amir, uh, this brown bird, I don't know it is a mixed bread or is it a pure bread. A mixed bread is capital B, small b, or is it a pure bread, Amir, which is very valuable if it is pure bread. For example, I'm just making it up. The, 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 uh, the mixed bread could be more valuable. But the pure bread is capital B, capital B. And based on cis, you don't know which one is this, right? Am I making some sense? You don't know. It's either capital B or small b. Let's go back to our example right here. You don't know this purple is capital B, capital P, small b, or that purple, capital P, capital B. Am I making some sense? They both are purple. They're all purple. They, both of these are purple. There's no difference. But which one is it? The genotype, is it homozygous or is it heterozygous? That's what test cross is. So you bring me a bird and you say, I don't know what it is. Or bring me a purple flower, I don't know what it is. Can you tell me what it is? Then what I do, I'll take it and cross it with a white bird. I cross it with a white bird and I know White bird is small b, small b. <coughs> right? I know that. I mean, you know that too. So crossing this with this one, let's take a look at it. Capital B, small b, small b, small b. Do I make sense? This, the Punnett square. This is a possibility of egg or a sperm. This is a male, let's say. Sperm, egg, egg. Do it make sense? That's how we go. You know, if I flip this coin, you got to get used to this coin. If I flip this coin, 
Head or tail? Huh? I don't know. Heads. Heads. She's right. How about if I flip it again? Which one, Steven? Tails. 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 Very good. Head. Tail. That's it. I'm writing on the board both possibilities. I hope I'm making some sense. Okay? This one, if I have a coin that I cheated, for example, both aside, both aside on this coin, if you don't trust me, come up here and look at it. I called federal government. I told them I'm teaching biology. Give me a coin that both sides is head. I said, okay, we will do this for you this just once and don't give it to anybody. This is very valuable coin. Coin, do not do not take it. Yeah, federal government. IRS gave me this one. Both sides is head on this coin, right? Both sides is head. So if I flip it, what's going to be? Heads. If I flip it again, what's going to be? Heads. Take a look at it during the break. Am I making some sense, everybody? Yes. So if you're trying to find out if it's homozygous or heterozygous, you always have to cross it with something homozygous? Homozygous recessive, yes. Yes, always. Yes. And then what will happen? What will I have? Sperm goes to the egg or pollen pollen goes to the uh, uh, ovary and then what you're gonna have? Capital B small b, right? Sperm goes to the egg. Sperm goes to the egg. And then what do you have? What is the ratio? What well what is this? Brown? Am I right? What is this? White? What is this? Please. Brown. Brown? Thank you. I know you're alive. That way I know you're alive. I'm not talking to the walls. And then this one? White. And what is the phenotypic ratio? Two to two. You, you learn it in first, second grade. You divide it by two. You simplify it. It's one to one. Right? The ratio is one to one. For every, for every brown one, you get one white. For every white one, you get one brown. Let's do the other scenario. What if it was this one? I don't know. Right? What if it was this one? Capital B, capital B, possibility of sperm, possibility of sperm. That's what Mendel cells. Pairs segregate during gamete formation. <coughs> pairs, that's law of segregation. You already know about that. The pairs segregate during gamete. You all know what gamete means gamete formation and then uh, what do you have here small b small b and then what you're gonna have capital B small b capital B small b capital B small b capital B small b right am I right or no do you see that or no and what are they what is this one brown what is that one what is that one what is that one so I know that animal or that plant you gave me is a purebred. I have to cross it. I have to cross it with a recessive one. I hope I'm making it. That is test cross. In test cross, your phenotypic ratio is always what? Your phenotypic ratio is always what? One to one. In test cross, your phenotypic ratio is always one to one. That's right here. So to determine the genotype, to determine the genotype, you see that sentence there now? To determine the genotype, we can carry out test cross. You don't know which one it is. To determine that genotype, you carry test cross, breeding the mystery individual with the mystery individual. You don't know which one. Am I right, Ariel? Which one? You don't know which one. Uh, with breeding individual uh, with recessive individual. Right? You all know the middle part. Yes? What did you say the ratio was for test cross? One, one? One to one. Yes. One to one. You know, you always say the ratio three to one, and you're going to learn here nine to three to three to one. So one for one for that one, two to one on the right? Or just no. One one? This one, there is no ratio here. Right? 
Thank you for asking that. Thank you. Please ask. What is the ratio here? Everything is round. There is no ratio here. If think of it this way, uh, 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 Stephen. Mm -hmm. If everybody in this room, all of the students were female, what would be the ratio of male to female in this room? Every every student is female. Nothing. I mean, there is no ratio. When you're you're talking about the ratio, you're talking about right now the ratio of the male to female is probably two to one. For every two female in this room, there is one male, right? But imagine if everybody was female, what would be the ratio? Zero. There's zero. Yeah, there is no ratio. Right? When you talk about ratio, it means there is always uh, the two numbers involved. You're going to learn here three numbers, four numbers involved. In a minute. Thank you for asking. Anybody, please ask anything. Let's go. Right here, um, uh, here he is. You don't know. Okay, that's what he's doing. That's what I've done on the board for you guys. Okay, he's doing this. If uh, there's a purple flower and you don't know which one it is, capital P, capital P, or capital P, small p, and you cross it with the small p, small p, you get uh, with a capital P, capital P, this one is, and that's what you're going to get. Capital P, capital P, capital P, capital P, you get all of these are uh, uh, brown. And then what here happens, the sperm and egg, the ratio is one to one. Just what I wrote down on the board for you guys. Okay, the law of independent assortment dihybrid, that's the next one we're going to talk about. So Mendel, uh, Mendel did not get into test cross, okay? Mendel just talked about um, independent assortment, uh, independent assortment and law of segregation. The first example, the white flower and purple flower is an example of quiz question today. The first example that we talked about, purple flower and white flower, is an example of law of segregation. Law of segregation means this coin that it has both head and tail, right? This coin that has head and tail, this coin doesn't. Look at it after class. This one had head and tail, right? So if I want to, it will, which one comes down? One of them will come down. You will not have the way it comes down on the ground or on the back of my hand, it will not be like this, right? That you cannot tell head is hair or tail, right? It's always head or tail. That's law of segregation. That is law of segregation. So when inside of us we are making females are making egg and males are making sperm, the genes will segregate. Am I making some sense? Either in her egg is going to be head and in my sperm is going to be tail. Am I making some sense, everybody? Either head or tail. It cannot be both. If there is both, then we have abnormalities. We have diseases, genetic disorders. I hope I'm making some sense. Just uh, you probably already know this. We'll come back to it. Females have XX and male have XY. So when I make sperm, it's either X or Y. It's either head or tail. When females makes egg, what is this? Evita, federal government gave me a head and head coin. How come they didn't give me a tail and tail coin? Anyhow, females make X or X. Am I making some sense? Two separate coins. Let's go. The next one is the law of independent assortment. And Mendel went over this one as well. Mendel dealt with one trait. Mendel, at the beginning of his study, he dealt with one purple flower or white flower. Am I making some sense? Purple flower or white flower? Then he said, what if, what if I have two coins? You all see this? What, what is this, anybody? Huh? It's a what? It's a what? 
maybe the walls, walls, ceilings. What is this? Huh? It's a coin. What? What kind of coin? I know it's a coin. Huh? It's, hey? No. What? A penny. It's a penny, right? It's a penny. It's a penny, and this one is a quarter, right? Two different type of coins. You all will follow what I'm talking about. Two different type of coins. If I flip this, it's going to become uh, Abraham Lincoln on one side and his monument on the other side, right? Head or tail, right? Same as this one. I don't know. This is George Washington and the other one. What state is this? State of, let's say, Alabama. I don't know. We can look at it. You, you know what I'm talking about. All 50 states are coming up with their coins. Right? Either George Washington in Alabama or Abraham Lincoln or his monument. Right? Or some, whatever it is on the back. I don't know on the pennies. Right? Am I making some sense? Answer my question. If I flip this coin, Stephen, does it influence what this is going to be? If this is Abraham Lincoln on this side, is that going to be for sure George Washington on this side too? No. It could be state of Alabama. Am I making some sense, everybody? If the monument is on this side, is that going to be Alabama on this side? No. It could be George Washington on that side. So they are independent of each other. When I flip them, right? When I flip them, they are independent of each other. Thanks to Mendel, he said that. We didn't know that. We humankind did not know that before Mendel said that. If you flip two coins, they're independent of each other. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We knew that, but Mendel put it with plants and genetics and genes. So independent assortment is a die hybrid. Die means two. So you're dealing with two coins. Die, it means two. Mono, it means what? One. Die, it means two, right? Die, it means two. I better not mix up my coins because I need them. This is the one that has. Okay, uh, it states that each pair of alleles segregate, each pair of alleles, each pair, each pair, that's a pair, isn't it? A coin is a pair, head or tail, that's a pair. Last time I checked my vocabulary. A pair of alleles segregates independently. A pair of alleles during gamete formation. Okay, so here it is. You should be able to do this during, you should be able to do this <coughs> during exam. Last semester, I gave it uh, an exam and only one student got it right. I don't know why. But then, let's go, let's go. So this one, is a purebred yellow, and this one is purebred green. Oh, I'm sorry, yellow and round. Yellow and round. Do you guys see that? Uh, 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 Katrina and uh, Lauren, do you guys see that? Capital Y, capital R. You see that? The capital Y stands for yellow, and capital R stands for round. Tron, you see that? Ariel? And then wrinkled, small r, small r, and green is small y, small y. Mendel used these two plants. Mendel used them. And then he crossed them. He crossed the purebred yellow round with purebred green wrinkled. And he got all yellow round. He was not, this time, he was not surprised. He was not surprised. He expected that. Kind of sort of. And then he took these guys, capital Y, is that right? You all know what I'm talking about. You have to be able to set it up. And if you don't know, please ask me. I'll put it on the whiteboard. Capital Y, small y, capital R, small r, right? He crossed them together. When he crossed them together, then, of course, on a right here, not sure, a hy hypothesis of dependent assortment, okay, predicted of springs of F2 generation, and then this is the F2 generation for a 9 to 3 to 3 to 3 to 1. 
Okay, so the possibility of sperm is capital R, capital Y, capital R, capital Y, small r, capital Y. The second one he says, I don't know, it could be capital R, small r, and I don't know why he left it out. It should be cap, uh, capital Y, uh, the, uh, capital R, small y, capital R. He left it out, why? I don't know, he wrote it down here. But anyhow, small y, small r, that's why I like to do these on the board by myself. The first possibility of the egg, capital Y, small, uh, capital R, small r, capital Y, small r, small y, small r, the capital R, that's what it's supposed to go here. And then small y, small r. Sperms go to the egg. What would that be? The phenotype, yellow, round, yellow, round, yellow. Oh, there, here is the r. I don't know how the things got out of order, but anyhow. Yellow, yeah, yellow round, yellow round, uh, yellow wrinkle. He didn't see that before. He said yellow wrinkle. And he sat, since he was a mathematician, he sat down and figured it out. That's what you're going to do today. Today you're going to count these kernels. There are four different varieties in here. There are four different varieties in here. There are four different varieties of uh, uh, seeds in here. One is round, yellow. The other one is yellow wrinkle, the other one is round green, and this one is the only one in here is green wrinkle. So what is the phenotypic ratio? Phenotypic ratio is 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. 9 what? 9 round yellow. Let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Nine round yellow. Three what? Three yellow wrinkle. One, two, three. Do you guys see that? And then another three. Which three? Round green. Can you guys see this? Round green. One, two, three. That's that three. And then one what? Maricela. One what? One wrinkled green. Do you guys follow what I'm talking about? If you guys, if you guys know what is going on in here, you should be able to set it up very nicely and easily. Right? If this one is head, that one is head also. One possibility. Is that right? Head and head. head and tail, right? Head, uh, tail and right here, head. And then this one, they both are tail. Okay, remember, you do have, I'm gonna raise this. Let's do it together. What are you guys doing? Are you guys revolting? Huh? Is there a revolution coming up that I don't know about? You do it. Grab a piece of paper and you do it first. I want you to think about it first. And then, uh, then I'll do it on the board for you. Okay? Let's say there are two uh, Brown and white, capital A, uh, the first generation. We'll do this first part together, and then the second part you'll do it. Uh, brown, bird, and white bird. Okay, brown and white. We have to use uh, another uh, another character. Brown. Give me something about the bird. Small. Small. Okay, brown and large. That's one bird, and the other bird is white and small. Two birds. Now, what I want to do, this one, brown, capital B, capital B, and large, capital A, capital A. 
I'm crossing it with a bird that is small b, small b, and small a, small a. Do you guys see that? Okay. What the office springs are going to, the genotype of the office spring would be what? Huh? Big A. What? Small. Small B. Small B. Uh, well, this starts with B. Big B. Small B. Big A. Small A. That's going to be their office springs, right? Am I making some sense? Because this guy in his sperm is going to contribute that one and that one. Here it is. That one and that one. That's in his sperm. The female, the female in her egg is going to contribute that one and that one. Here is that one and that. One. Do you guys see that? Yes or no? It's just like I do not have two coins. Oh yeah, maybe I do have two coins. That they both are head, right? And they both are tail. No matter how I flip this, it's going to be tail, right? So it doesn't matter which A I choose. This one would be same as that one, right? This one would be same as that one, right? But they come together during fertilization. In fertilization, this egg and that sperm Right? This is a sperm. One from this, one from that gene, and one from that gene. This one, one from that gene, and one from that gene. And this is the egg. They come together at fertilization. Yes? Now, what I do, I take these brothers and sisters, and I cross them. So one parent is capital B, small b, capital A, small a, right? And the other parent is also capital B, small b, capital A, small a. Let's say this is female, and this is male. Now, you come up with these. The rest is easy. You come up with those. I'm, I'm listening, I'm waiting, I'm hearing. Yes, you had a question all the time. Yeah. Well, my question was, how do you learn the uh, second generation? So just taking the first generation of these plant based and the second generation? Yes, the office springs yeah. of the first generation. The office springs of these parents. See, that's what I did. I took the office springs of the sperm of that parent. The sperm of, what is the sperm of that parent? Capital B, small. A capital A. Capital B, capital A, that's sperm. You see the sperm? And the A of this one, small b, small a. Right? And then, of course, sperm and egg go together. Voila. And what is the phenotype of that guy? It's brown, right? <coughs> Large. What is the phenotype of this one? Brown. Large. What is the phenotype of that one? Brown. Large. Make the sperm an egg. Um, Marisa, are you done? Make the sperm an egg. While I get the drink of water. You work hard and I drink water. Oh, but that's, that's a fair way of dealing with these things. You work hard. Tron, are you done making the sperm and egg? You done? I want to take a look at it.
like it, uh, most, I checked most of you, not all of you, but I checked most of you, I think you all did uh, pretty decent, very good, okay, so you guys have a very good idea now of what's going on, so okay. let's do it together, let's, okay, okay. You got it. Let's, let's do it together, okay, let's, since, uh, uh, since this is going to be on YouTube, I might as well write it, ah, uh, Blank screen. Here we go. I can blank screen. I hope the videos. take care of the, uh, uh, the genotype, right? We have not done phenotype. Let's do the phenotype together. I hope you don't make mistake on the phenotype, but uh, let's do the phenotype together. Okay, so you all did this. Is that right? You all did this capital B with capital A. That's one possibility of quarter head and penny head, right? Do I make sense? Quarter head penny head, capital B, capital A, okay, quarter head again, let's say, and then penny tail, capital B, small A, the penny tail, okay, now, quarter tail, small B, one possibility of sperm, and then penny which one? Capital, the penny is the head. So capital, um, uh, capital A. And then the last one, they both are tail. Both of them are tail. Small b, small a. These are possibilities of, let's say, the sperm during meiosis. These came from meiosis. Meiosis talks about what? What is the definition of meiosis? I asked in quiz today. What is meiosis means in Greek? I ask. Huh? Reduction. You're reducing from four chromosomes to what? To two. Right? Meiosis. 
Sperm comes from what process? Meiosis. Let's talk about the eggs. Same thing. Because the parents are same. This parent and that parent are same. So the possibilities of the eggs are same. Capital B, capital A, capital B, capital A, right? Am I making some sense? Uh, capital B, small a, capital, uh, um, small b, capital A, small b, small a. I draw my lines, the Punnett square, right? That's what Punnett square is. It means you make a table like this, and Punnett was the name of the scientist who came up with this, and he was a statistician, a mathematician, a statistician. He came up with that. Okay, are you guys ready? Let's go. Capital B, capital B, capital A, capital A, right? You all know what I'm doing. You all did this. All of you, are, I didn't check Maya, but most non I don't know, you've done the same thing. Okay, so this one, capital B, capital B, capital A, small a, right? Do you guys see what I'm doing? Capital B, small b, capital A, capital A. Capital B, small a, capital A, small, uh, small b, right? If I make a mistake, please let me know. Capital B, capital B, capital A, small a. Capital B, capital B, small a, small a. Very unique. You have not seen that yet. And then we'll get to the genotype, to the phenotype of it in a minute. This is a genotype. This is the genotype. So let's go. Capital B, small b, capital A, small a. Capital B, small b, small a, small a. You've done, all of you done this. We're doing it together. Capital B, small b, capital A, capital A. You have not seen this one yet. We'll go over it. Capital B, uh, small b, capital A, small a. Uh, small b, small b, capital A, capital A. I've not seen that one. Small b, small b, capital A, small a. This one, capital B, small b, capital A, small a. Capital B, small b, uh, what is it? Small a, small a. Small b, small b, capital A, small a, small b, small b, small a, small a. Right? Right? Am I right? Let's go over the phenotype now. Are you guys ready? So we said this is brown, this is large, bird. White, bird, small, bird. And we cross them together. So what would that be? B? That would be brown. Is that right? Oh, come on, don't, don't give me a hard time. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so this one would be brown, what? Large, right? You all agree? Same, same as his father or grandfather. Same as his grandfather. This one, what? Brown, large. If it has capital B, it must be dominant. It's brown. If it has capital A, it is dominant. It is large. Am I making some sense? Brown, it has capital B, capital A. Brown, large. Brown, large. Do I make sense, everybody, so far? How about this one? What is this one? Brown, large, right? Yes, no, maybe, perhaps. What about that one? Brown, for sure, right? Capital B, capital B. And what is this one? Small. Wow, Mendel was shocked. Mendel saw that and said, wow, I haven't seen this one yet. That's a new variety I have not seen. Right. Marisa, so you're, you're frowning. Don't frown too much. You become like me. Right? Brown, small. 
How about the next one? Brown, the capital B, is masking the small b. Brown, what is it? Large. This one, brown, small. Maybe I should write them in a different color. I should write down with brown. Uh, sorry, small. What is this one? Huh? Brown, large. What is that one? Brown, large. What is that one? Yeah. White, what? White, what? Large. Okay. Maybe I should write it on this one. White large. Well, white large. How about that one? White large. How about that one? What is this one? Huh? It's brown. Avita, do you see this? No. Brown large. This one, brown, what? Brown, small. This one, white, what? White, large. And this one looks like its grandfather or grandmother. White, small. What is the phenotypic ratio? How many of them are brown? How many of them are brown large? Shall we count them? I would say nine of them. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And nine. Do you trust me now when I say nine? The nine large, large brown. And then how many of them are brown small? Brown small. Okay, let's go over. One, two, three. Do you trust me? Three of them now. And then 